So today we want to talk a little bit about perception, about intention and the seat of intention and also self-perception. How we sometimes, and all of us do that, how we sometimes um, deceive ourselves in terms of our intentions. The Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu said in a very beautiful hadith, he said, إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَةِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ الْإِمْرِئِ مَا نَوَالُ فَمَنْ هَجْرَ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِي فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِي وَمَنْ هِجْرَةُ لِلْدُّنْيَا يُصِيبُهَا أَوْ إِمْرَأَةٌ يَنْكِحُهَا فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى مَا هَجْرَ إِلَيْهِ Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم said Truly all actions are judged by intention and every person shall get only that which he has intended. So they who take the journey towards Allah and His Messenger, messenger has taken the journey towards Allah and His Messenger. But they who have taken the journey towards the earth, seeking its pleasure or meeting up with women, so this is obviously in the context of these men who have uh, taken the journey, then that's what they will get. Then they will get what they intended. So this, this hadith was... Uh, <coughs> Well, the Nabi said this at the time when, when, when there was the opportunity for Muslims to migrate from Mecca to Medina. And people were excited about this, this migration because they were promised good things on the other side. But there were some amongst them who took this journey because they thought the, the, the women in, Mecca is more, in Medina is more beautiful than the women in Mecca. Mm. And so that became the intention. And the 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 the, um, the climate in in Medina is much better than the climate in Makkah because Makkah is more hot, Medina is more cool, and so they went for that for that uh, intention and not for the intention to assist the Rabbi Muhammad Sallallahu in his mission. So what does this all mean? The dictionary definition of intention doesn't make intention anything to do with the heart. It makes intention to do with the mind. It says uh, it is an act or instance of determining mentally uh, upon uh, or determining mentally upon some action or result. But according to the Quran, in this Quranic verse that I quoted, and in this hadith, intention has a deeper meaning. Uh, it is not that which is just mentally processed, but it is also that which is motivated from the heart. So it is that thing which, which drives a feeling in us towards an action. So therefore an intention to pray or to fast does not necessarily have to be uttered because it's already something that's in the heart and Allah knows what is in the heart. So we all should try and develop this art of sharpening one's intentions for not all intentions are clear. Um, even though we make them, we say them utterly, or, or we utter them. So, even though, so when we state our intentions during Salah, at the very beginning, it's about getting clear as to why we are doing the action. And by doing this, we are distinguishing between the explicit intention and the implicit intention. So the, end, the explicit intention is that intention that we utter. Everybody can hear it, everybody can see it, this is what I'm doing. But the implicit intention is really the, the intention of why we want to um, really do this. So the implicit intention, which is the one that comes from the heart, is the intention that the universe is receiving from you. And so it's, it's ju you judge on that intention. So even if you say, I am making my intention to fast, uh, 
what you what you're implicitly stating is in your heart um, and that's what the universe is picking up so you might be saying that I'm fasting but it's really just uh, to show people that you are pious and that's the intention that the universe is picking up so even this intention is created in contrasting to you you have the, the explicit and the implicit intention so even this intention can be a positive or a negative so what we make known to the world and this is something that we need to strive to is that the explicit uh, intention and the implicit intention does not conflict with one another sincere intention is like the fuel for the engine if the fuel is wrong the engine is not going to work sincere intention is also the basis of akhlaq any of your intentions whether they are good or bad or any of your actions whether they are good or bad is judged by the intention behind it so Islam is that kind of system that helps us to get in touch with our true intentions Islam means to surrender or to give up those false intentions So we only come to know our deepest intentions when we allow ourselves this, this space for muhasaba that we always talk about, this critical self-reflection. Why am I doing this? Why am I saying that? Why am I feeling something but my actions are something different? So our true intentions is what leads us to our true sense of ourselves. And we maintain true intentions by sacrificing the things that stand in our way of being authentic, and by denying ourselves and by purifying ourselves in our body, mind and soul. Allah says in the Quran, وَلَيْسَ عَلَيْكُمْ جُنَاحٌ فِي مَا أَخْتَقْتُمْ بِهِ وَلَكِمْ مَا تَعَمَّدَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ وَكَانَ اللَّهَ رَفُورُ رَحِيمًا Allah says, and there is no blame on you if you make mistakes. But what matters is the intentions of your hearts. And Allah is after forgiving, most merciful. So it doesn't mean that when we read that Allah is after forgiving, most merciful. So it's okay, Allah is cool, you know, Allah is going to forgive us, whatever. Again, there is an intention behind that. Why, how are you reading this with the intention that oh, Allah will forgive me? But Allah forgives when there is sincere regret of, of a blame. So Allah is not going to go back into the history and say, Ya, but you did that and that. Allah will forgive that. Allah judge you based on your current intention. And just finally, I just wanted to, because I heard this word salih being used a lot, and we use it often. If we see somebody with a duki or with a kufiya, then we say, or oh, he's praying five times a day, and we say, oh, he's so salih. So what does this word salih really mean? Salih comes from the root word salaha. And salaha means to put things in order, or to make amends, or to repair or to bring something towards peace, or to reconcile, or to become useful or practical. So when we become salih, these are only tools like the salah and the fasting, whatever. these are not things that make you salih. When you have used these tools correctly and it amends your life, it makes your life more practical, it repairs those mistakes within you, it, you're making amends, you're making peace where there's no peace, and you use these tools, then you are salia. Then you become salia. So next time when you see someone with a kufiya or with a scarf, don't think that they're salia because sometimes the external is 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 also a, a cloak, but really it's what you know, is internal uh, that matters. Because sometimes you find somebody that's still praying high time today, but when he opens his shop, then he cheats you know, or he lies. So does these, these tools that Allah has given us of fasting and, and praying, does it really um, help us when we, when we are challenged? Allahumma ansurhu nasra deena Muhammad, Allahumma ansurhu jahideena fi kulli mat.